Mientras Dubai sigue diversificando su economía, la Cámara de Comercio de Dubai sigue instando a la integración de la economía del país con las de mercados emergentes alrededor del mundo. El enfoque más crucial en este esfuerzo es América Latina. Aunque los exportadores de Dubai solo entraron en la región recientemente, su éxito ha sido rápido. El valor total de comercio no relacionado con el petróleo entre Dubái y América Latina desde 2014 hacia 2018 fue de 28.000 mil millones de dólares. Desde 2011 hacia 2018, las importaciones desde América Latina a Dubái crecieron un 51% y con una participación en el mercado de importaciones a América Latina de un 92% del total de comercio no relacionado con el petróleo. En 2018, los socios principales de Dubái en América Latina fueron Brasil, México y Perú. Con el continuo crecimiento económico de América Latina, la Cámara de Comercio de Dubái está capitalizando esta oportunidad para identificar las perspectivas comerciales para sus socios a través de sus oficinas representativas en Panamá y Brasil. Con dos de las diez oficinas globales ahora situadas en América Latina, uno en São Paulo establecida en 2017, otra en Panamá en 2018 y una tercera que abrirá en Argentina más tarde este año, la región sola está superada por África, en donde se encuentra con cuatro oficinas representativas. Mientras que los principales productos primarios comerciados entre Dubái y América Latina en 2018 fueron piedras, metales preciosas, alimentos, bebidas, maquinaria y equipos, hay espacio abundante para ampliar el comercio y la inversión bilateral a sectores como infraestructura, turismo, finanzas, seguridad alimentaria, manufactura y energía renovable. Utilizando su experiencia como un hub de comercio global, los Emiratos Árabes Unidos tienen gran potencial para ayudar a renovar las antiguas carreteras de transporte de autos, ferias y de carga, especialmente en Colombia, carreteras, Perú, ferreas y Brasil, sin mencionar las posibilidades para aumentar comercio electrónico y mejorar la eficiencia de las cadenas logísticas en todos los ámbitos. Demostrando su fuerte compromiso con la expansión de cooperación económica con América Latina, el Foro de Comercio Mundial de la Cámara de Dubái será llevado a cabo en Panamá y por primera vez fuera de Dubái, con el tema Próximos Hubs, Nuevas Regiones, que le ayudará a Dubái a articular su misión para posicionarse como la puerta al mundo. Hello, hello, and uh, do stay with us. We do have, we have two more sessions before lunchtime. Thank you all for being here. We're absolutely delighted that you are here with us. And, um, uh, okay, Jorge, yes, fine, we're all here, great. Thank you. So <laughs> please stay with us. We're going to talk about entrepreneurship. So we have an express <coughs> session because we have another session to get through before we actually um, get through for the, the rest of the, the day before lunch, so do stay with us. Let me quickly introduce you to our panel. We're absolutely delighted to have with us the president of the City of Knowledge for Panama, Jorge Rosamina. Thank you so much for being with us. From the Dubai Startup Hub Advisory Committee in the UAE, His Excellency Hisham Al Shirawi. So great to have you here. And from Colaborador America Medellin in Colombia, we have Juan Pablo Ortega. Juan Pablo, I'd like to start with you. And when we look at um, entrepreneurship, and we look at empowering entrepreneurship particularly. Give us a feel for what have you been doing. Now, you wear many hats, of course, in Colombia. You're also the co-founder of the Innovation um, Agency in Medellin. So this is something very close to your heart, and you've been putting a lot of time and effort into it. So tell us, how has that been actually operating, and are you seeing some success stories? I think we have a little microphone issue there, or else I'm just a lot louder than you are. Hola. How are my friends? Mike, thank you. This is where we need some innovation around the world. Absolutely. 
Okay. It happens everywhere. We got it. It's not, We're there. It's not, a, it's not a big issue. Okay. Well, just let me explain a little bit what, what we, we are doing, actually we're trying to do uh, in the case of, of Medellin as an example. Uh, we understand actually the entrepreneurship and innovation uh, has to be present, has to be used as a tool in order to move forward the city, to move forward the country, uh, and, and actually uh, as it's probably the most powerful uh, economic and social development tool. So what we did at the beginning was to put together a huge vision, a huge and shared vision. Okay? We said uh, at that time, and, and in 2009, Medellin is, gonna, is going to be the, the innovation capital of Latin America in 2021. And then we put together a roadmap, a plan in order to accomplish that. But at the same time, what we did was to put, was also, you, it's, it's not enough just if, if the indicator says that you are the most innovative, innovative city in, in the region. Actually, the rest of the world should recognize you as, as innovative. Yes, yes. So we start since the beginning to, to work with, the, with innovation hubs all around the world. So we, we have active uh, projects and conversations uh, with Singapore, with Tel Aviv, okay. with uh, Dubai, with Boston, with uh, Silicon Valley. So that's the other part of, the, of and, and we also attract these, these companies to, to Medellin. So we put together a, a program, we call it a landing program. And nowadays we have in Ruta NS building, that is the innovation agency, uh, more than 270 companies from 37 countries, uh, having more than 5,000 employees. Oh. So at the end, that's, yeah. that's the way that the city is trying to connect all the efforts for entrepreneurship and innovation. Thank you so much. We'll you know, look at that. We don't have a lot of time, but we'll make sure we look at this in a bit more detail. Um, Mr. al Shawawi, when we're looking at what's going on in Dubai and the startup hub, and of course the initiative by the Chamber of Commerce as well to make sure that this is important here, how have you been developing that over recent years? Because it's been in place now a few years. Yeah, actually uh, the Dubai Startup Hub, uh, with the aim of uh, creating opportunities for the younger population to have their own businesses, and their own companies, especially the ones that do not have family guidance to, uh, to achieve this goal. And uh, uh, we have to Jared Bay, we have the smart newer, and we have market access. They, are, uh, they attend to different uh, sectors within the overall young population. Uh, the, the process starts from even registering the ideas with copyrighting uh, their, uh, and protecting their uh, their uh, uh, inter intellectual property in terms of thoughts, and then evaluating, finding whether those ideas do serve any specific purpose, do they, can they sustain itself them themselves within the overall competitive environment that uh, UAE uh, is characterized with. And then uh, we study the person's personality, whether okay. is he capable of carrying on a business, because it is very easy in our region for people to fail and then get demoralized and never stand up, up, up again. And uh, we have addressed this matter very, very specifically. And uh, we make sure that we inform them is that failure is part of success. You cannot succeed without failing. And if anybody in business ever can tell me that he has never failed in his life in businesses, I would say you have one big liar. Uh, so. Uh, this, uh, then yeah. we, after studying those, then we create programs to address their shortcomings, whether academic or hands-on. And after that, we, uh, we have them uh, prepare a feasibility study and all of that with, with assistance. And after that, we try to uh, then talk to certain financial institutions in order to provide them the financial requirement in order for them to, uh, to uh, start their, their businesses. Uh, there are many success cases, and there are cases where the, the people found after they uh, uh, went through the process, they were picked up by other uh, bigger companies, and they started their businesses as joint ventures with other uh, with other, other organizations. All in all, I think that uh, the program is doing reasonably well. It has attracted talents from all over the world mm -hmm. in certain yes, yes. in certain aspects. 
And I think um, in the coming uh, uh, 18 months, you will see some new initiatives by the Dubai Chamber which will take that further. Yeah, we'll talk more about that, but that's what's also very nice about it too, is that you know, it is like it's almost an international uh, venture too, whereby a lot of people, that you've created a buzz around this, which is great. Now, Jorge, talk to us a little bit um, about the City of Knowledge. Many of us here uh, got the opportunity to visit it. I was very, very impressed by what you're doing there. Um, absolutely remarkable work. So, but when you look, how essential is this and something like this for a country like Panama, for the city? I think <coughs> the city of knowledge is a basic unit in the whole equation. If Panama is to keep growing and mainly providing you know, good living condition for all its people and not only Panama. I must tell you or share that those two businessmen who had the dream, they both passed away already, of creating a city of knowledge, they had in mind that the 21st century would be the century of knowledge yes. and the application of knowledge, of innovation, and that would be the only way that we would place ourselves in the world. Is so from day one, and when we started working, three persons, we had in mind this dream of transforming a former U.S. Army base who had been for decades the headquarters of the U.S. Southern Command. And I must mention that from that, our offices, some of the invasions, including our own, Panama's invasion, were directed and conducted. So it had a lot of meaning to transform and replace, as the President of Panama presented to the international community uh, at the end of the last century, that Panama was willing to replace soldiers and weapons yes. for students, teachers, and yeah. books, and research and innovation. I think that's it, and evidently for any country, Panama included, of course, betting and going after innovation, after creating conditions so that people can develop new ideas and new answers to new problems and challenges. That was a visionary yes, statement, indeed. and yeah. that's what we've been working on. And I think also, you know, it comes at a wonderful time for a transition and, um, one, Pablo, if I can bring you here on this too. A transition, you look at a, a city like Medellin as well, to just think back many years and see the transition that this city has made. And how can you actually get a supportive ecosystem in a city and transform that city to become something new and to become something different and in the eyes of the world to, to see, to view Medellin as something different and progressive? Well, well I, I, I talk a little bit about it before, but I, but I just want to mention this. This is a long-term effort. It's not gonna happen from one day to, uh, to, to other. So you, you need to put uh, attention in each step of, of the process. So you, you should put a, a vision, a long-term vision, but you also need to put together how you are gonna accomplish, what, is gonna, wh what should happen in the short term, in the medium term, in the long term in order to accomplish that goal. So that's the first topic. The second one is that you should do it with your own citizens, with your own people, in get involved with them, how they think could be the best way to move this forward. Because if, if the people actually not, not embrace what, what you are doing, it's gonna be real difficult to move it forward. Uh, other thing that, is, that, that I think is, is quite, quite important is to define exactly in which, it could be which sectors, which key enabled technologies that you are gonna prioritize if you want to in order to, to be the best in those specific topics. And at the end, I have to tell you, in, in 1991, Medellin was the most dangerous city in the world. Yes. In 2013, <laughs> Medellin won a prize as the most innovative city in the world that year. So a lot of things happened in just 22 years in order to accomplish that. And it's, but, but it's, it was just one step. It was really important for us that the world recognized what was happening there but actually we're, we're still moving forward and just a couple of months ago, the, the World Economic Forum uh, decides, announced actually that, that the fifth uh, four industrial revolution center in the world is gonna be located in Medellin. Actually, thanks Mr. Alberto Moreno and IDB for the support of that, on that. 
uh, and, and that put us again in, in, a, in, a, in a world level, in a global level. So we are focusing our efforts in this case in, in blockchain, in artificial intelligence, yes. and in, in Internet of Things. So Medellin is, and, and actually, uh, that's the only way. We, we lost, as a Latin America, as a region, the, the last three industrial revolution. So we need to move forward rapidly with our own talent and connect us with the rest of the world in order to be part of the fourth industrial revolution. That's, that's the goal right now, and that's the, the, the scope that we, we want to pursue in the case of Medellin. It is, and I think there's that sense of urgency around the world, and it's definitely in Dubai, and I think it's definitely been felt in Dubai. But tell me, Hisham, when you look at you know, what needs to be done, the private sector needs to be a lot more active on this. There needs to be more finance in this. Um, how, where are you in that progress in Dubai, and how do you find, what are you hearing back from a lot of these startups and entrepreneurs? Yeah, actually the entire ecosystem needs to be uh, addressed. You know, it's uh, not just uh, one sector within the, with the, within the overall system. I mean, the government needs to introduce further regulations. One of the, one of the obstacles, for example, for some of the startups in the new technology, such as FinTech or uh, blockchain or artificial intelligence, is that they didn't have a category to register their businesses in the economic yes, department. Yes, yes, yes. And this is something very simple oh, yeah. and could be remedied, I mean, very, very, uh, very easily. There are, there are so many factors that has to be incorpor incorporated. The country has done a lot, as a matter of fact. There are so many other initiatives by other departments, not just the Dubai, Dubai Chamber, which have addressed these requirements, and there is a continuous encouragement of the, of the same. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, the World Economic Forum's report of 2018 has introduced few more uh, factors to uh, uh, evaluate the country's uh, uh, competitiveness. And uh, they have introduced idea generation, the inter entrepreneurship culture, eager, uh, openness, agility, etc. And uh, the country, through its initiatives that it had intro introduced in the past two years, they have moved about 10 points, and they are the 11th out of 190 countries in, uh, in, the, in, in the competitiveness, yes. which is quite an, quite, an, quite an achievement. Yet, when we come to the point of financial uh, requirements for the startups, I would say that we are not doing enough. A lot more could be, could be done. Unfortunately, the banking sector wants to treat the loans to these startups yes. as personal loans and not as SME business loans. So an SME business loan will have different criteria, will have a yes. different reporting system. They will have to be some, uh, a longer grace period with certain reports that are required to be generated by this new startup mm -hmm. in order to maintain certain ratios that matches with the, standard, with the, with the industry uh, norms. Uh, the financial, sec the financial uh, uh, industry, unfortunately, as I said, wants to treat it as personal loans because then they can recover it through certain other means later. The banking sector should do more yes. in their corporate social responsibility. They have to create a budget. Some of the budgets are wasted in the, by, the, by the banks, which could be channeled to these, to, to these startups with a certain uh, uh, support system, as an SME mm -hmm. support s system, uh, with the people who can guide these young people of how to maintain their books, of how to manage their working capital, and uh, take their, their, their businesses to a bit of a more professional level yeah. than a simple startup. So regulations by the governments are required. The banking sector has to, the banking sector has to step, step in and do not shy from supporting them. Investing in these startups, mm -hmm. it's investing in the future. Yes, yes. These young people, if they do not have proper opportunities of starting their own businesses and do not get jobs in the government sector and do not get jobs in the private sector, will be a social bomb. So it, uh, the, all of the different ingredients of the, of the economy and of the system, of the society, have all to co cooperate and give these people an opportunity. Yes. And I do think, you know, we all also have to stand back and think this is very, we're in a very different time than we've ever been. And I think you know the concept of startups and people doing more in entrepreneurs. Do you find here, particularly in Latin America too, and in Panama, 
that there is there's room for that, that the financial community are welcoming some of the newer, younger entrepreneurs. But again, they're coming up with some tremendous ideas that perhaps the people with the money maybe sometimes don't fully understand. But we've seen plenty of success stories. Well, I must tell you all that when we first created the very first business incubator in Panama, people didn't even know what it was. <laughs> yes. I told a few of you yesterday that they asked me if it was an incubator for chicks. For baby for, chickens, for huh? baby chickens. <laughs> uh, yes. You know, the, the word was not even known, right. the concept. Since then, we've been working to create a whole ecosystem with funding, mentoring, but I absolutely subscribe the idea that the banks, and some of them are here represented, <coughs> uh, have been backing the startups. Okay, good. But we strongly believe that we have to create, and this is basically what City of Knowledge is all about, to create an environment where you have universities doing research, high-tech companies, international organizations, startups, and they're all creating a community to look for new answers, innovate. We summarize our, our vision to become <coughs> an everyday strong, more strongly, an a community devoted to social change from a humanistic, scientific, mm -hmm. and business approach. All of them at the same time. And that includes the banks supporting the effort. Absolutely. But we, and also having an endless horizon. We don't nurture startups just for Panama or just for Central America, but for the world. You know, and some of the companies that have been uh, starting at the City of Knowledge are already reaching out. Some of them are in Silicon Valley. Some are working in different countries already. I started with one idea. Yes, yes. You know, so, and we have to promote talent and dedicate and open opportunities for young people and sometimes not so young, yes, but yes, they have true. creative yes. ideas. And that's what uh, the entrepreneurship environment system has to be solidified. Now we have just, uh, we're, we're on the sort of the urgent fast track here ourselves in terms of ending up this in time. So Juan Pablo, just very quickly, urgently what needs to be done in the region? Is it a sh mind shift uh, that needs to happen here? Is it more money? Is it just a better environment to, to breed more entrepreneurs? What can we do to move this a little I quicker? I just have a couple of questions. The first one is we need to educate our people. So we, need, we have a lack of talent in Latin America. We need three million coders, new coders, until 2021, just two years. We need to, so it's a huge task, that's the first one. The second one, I think, is that we should work together. So I have a visit yesterday afternoon to Jorge in City of Knowledge. It was a pretty amazing conversation, uh, but the idea behind this was just exactly to how we could, could, could and should work together. Medellin and Panama City. And I actually, I just want to invite you to, to, to add to us uh, and, and how we three, the three of cities that we are representing in this panel should, should work together in order to move forward more rapidly. Indeed, because it's very much, it's, it's, it's a global opportunity for everyone. And again, Hisham, on that final closing note here, when we look at what can be done, what needs to be done urgently, and again, how do you bring this community together around the world, a community of like global entrepreneurs? See, most of these uh, startups are younger people with yes. fresh ideas, with ideas outside the box. Now, unfortunately, the people in charge yes. are the people who are older generation, who are not fully exposed to such new <laughs> technologies. So <laughs> this disruptive uh, uh, situation, if not taken or addressed with an open mind, we will end up alienating them and they will not get an opportunity. Universities have to introduce courses that are, that are matching with the requirement of time. The, uh, uh, and are you advising on this? I mean, are you in there with them, yeah, making sure this happens? We do. I mean, we, our, the companies, even uh, corporates, bigger companies, have to uh, take, take a bit of a risk on investing in one of these uh, small startups. Uh, that even if, for example, those ventures go sour and they fail, it will be a very small 
but a very small percentage of their overall overall investment port portfolio. So what I'm trying to say is that the future is different than today. Give these young people an opportunity. And I'm going to leave you a closing word with this. It's been wonderful to see the city of knowledge. We have a feeling for what's going on here. How can you actually now take that idea, bring it to the wider world, or bring it at least regionally and indeed to your friends in Dubai to make sure that everybody shares the knowledge? Let me say one word. We do have to work on education, not only higher yes. education. From preschool, we have to introduce new concepts, entrepreneurship, feelings, among our kids that will grow up to be the next generation that will lead our countries. And that's a job that we all have to work on. If we don't prepare the next generations with no ideas who are, you know, who are mm -hmm. condemning our countries not to be successful. That's the only thing that could stop Panama if we don't have the proper generation trained with no ideas. With no ways of looking at life. And I think you're so right. I think we hear this reflected right around the world. And unfortunately, we have to, to wrap this up. But I do think, and I hear it from all of you, the fact that, yes, we need a lot more support in the business community. We need more private support. I think the government in every country has done, it's it started it, it's, it's put the foundation there that everybody needs to go with. But ultimately, I, I like what you're saying there, I think, in that one, Jorge, as well, that it needs to actually start from that very younger base, because we're, we're moving to a very different world than you or it I have sort of been in. The past is over. And our session is over. We have to leave it there. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Juan Pablo Ortego from Colombia, thank you so much. Um, His Excellency Hisham al Sharawi from the UAE, and Jorge uh, Rosamina from the City of Knowledge here in Panama. Thank you so much, dear audience. Sorry we didn't have more time. Too quick. And we do have another session, so please stay with us. We'll just get this ready.